Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Now, if you scroll through any PC building forum, you probably come across the question, how many case fans do you need? Now, unsurprisingly, there's not one definitive answer, which is very frustrating for first time and even veteran PC builders. But today, we're gonna to try and figure out if there is a point of diminishing returns when it comes to optimizing the airflow in your system. Now, by the very nature of this experiment, today's results are not a one size fits all scenario. Not every case has the same airflow design or ventilation or even size, but for today's case, we're gonna be using the Fractal Design Mesh 5C, which is a fairly typical front panel mesh design that a lot of cases might be able to utilize. But this should still provide a rough idea of the typical ATX case. We'll be installing my thermal benchmarking system, which includes a Core i5-12600K overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz at 1.25 volts, which gives us roughly 150 watts to dissipate. This is cooled by the Noctua NHD15. The CPU is then paired with the EVGA RTX 3060 Ti Gaming XC, which has a fixed fan speed of 65% in order for us to reach a noise normalized level of 40 dBA along with the rest of the fans in the system. This should also make for a fairly typical CPU GPU combo which is fairly indicative of the average system and provide a decent thermal output for us to dissipate through the case fans. So the goal of today's video is to max out the amount of fan mounts we have in our system which in most ATX cases is going to be 320 mm fans in the front two 120mm fans in the top and one 120mm fan in the rear. Now you may ask why we aren't using 140mm fans, but not all cases will be able to utilize 140mm fans compared to more cases that will support 120mm, so in order to not complicate today's results, we'll just stick to 120mm fans. Sadly, I don't have a full set of six of the same fans, so instead we'll be going for a mix of Be Quiet, Silent Wings and Pure Wings fans. So we're still keeping within the same brand, but either way, this shouldn't add too much variance to our testing. I've tested both the CPU and the GPU via synthetic benchmarks for a duration of 15 minutes in order to fully heat soak both components. Starting with one exhaust fan in the rear of the case, which is pretty much the bare essential fan placement for a standard ATX case you can actually buy. Our overclock 12600K hit a maximum of 76C, which is totally acceptable, so it appears that one exhaust fan should be assisting a little with directly removing the hot air from within the case. But things aren't going so well for the RTX 3060 Ti, which actually hit 90 degrees C, which is definitely not optimal, and actually caused the GPU to drop clocks pretty aggressively, so if you have a graphics card like this, one exhaust fan may not cut it in this configuration. Moving on to our next configuration, which is a pretty common fan placement for an ATX case for a pretty out-of-the-box airflow setup again. We have one exhaust fan in the rear, but also one intake in the middle front. Starting again with our CPU, we see no change whatsoever, however, we do see a slight reduction to our GPU temperatures down from 90C to 86C. 86 degrees C is still a little toasty, but still an improvement nonetheless over our first round. Now, onto our third configuration, which is what could be considered a pretty middle of the road fan placement with one exhaust fan in the rear and two intakes in the front. For our CPU, we see a very minimal decrease with a single 1 degree C improvement, showing that our NHD15 seems to have very little regard for the added positive pressure. However, we can see that our GPU has dropped down to 81C, which is a 5 degrees C reduction compared to our previous configuration. Our next setup sees the addition of a second exhaust fan in the top rear end of the case, which, as we can see, has started to improve our CPU thermals with a reduction of 2 degrees C down to 73C, which is actually the lowest temperature achieved for our CPU in today's testing. For the GPU, we can see another significant reduction of up to 5 degrees C down to 76C, which is much more reasonable compared to starting out at 90 degrees. Adding a third intake in the bottom front of the case sees no change for our CPU temperatures, but we do see a minor reduction of 1 degrees on our GPU temps down to our lowest temperature in today's testing. Our final configuration sees the addition of a third exhaust in the top of the case, which actually negatively impacts our temperatures, compared to our previous placement with our CPU hitting 74C and our GPU reaching 76C. So based on this, it seems that we've reached a point of diminishing returns with an excess of fans negatively impacting our system's thermals. Taking a look at all our tests combined, we can see that our CPU has very little regard for the additional intake, but we do have to bear in mind that the NHD15 is one of the best performing air coolers on the market. But if you have a smaller air cooler, intakes are still going to be a great assistance in reducing CPU temperatures. However, our GPU clearly benefits greatly from as much intake as possible, as we can see a massive reduction from 90C to 75C with free intakes. But also, that second rear exhaust fan also assists with exhausting some additional hot air from the case. Sadly, that third exhaust does very little for our system and actually seems like it's stealing fresh air as soon as it comes into the case, so depending on your setup, this fan placement is probably not going to be necessary. 
To conclude our test results, it seems like the most optimal configuration is somewhere around the two exhaust, two intakes or three intakes area, depending on your hardware. Now, I must reiterate, these results are not indicative of every single system you could put together. So you do have to take today's results with a pinch of salt, but also understand how it could affect your system if you're in for a similar configuration. It's also very important to understand how a positive pressure and a negative pressure setup can impact your system, not just in terms of temperatures, but also in terms of dust buildup. While filtered intakes will do a great job of reducing dust buildup inside your system, a negative pressure setup will allow dust to enter through different areas of your case and increase the buildup as they won't be filtered. So it's important to understand both and balance it out accordingly depending on your system. Overall, it's very easy to underutilize or underestimate the amount of fans that you need in your system, which will result in poor thermals. But on the flip side, it's also very easy to overdo it and add too many fans and actually impact your thermals as well. So, it's important to find the right balance. Hopefully, from today's results, it should give you a rough idea of where you need to be and allow you to make a more informed decision on the way that you optimize the airflow in your system. I had a lot of fun with today's testing and I think the results are really interesting, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. If you're after more PC Jack content though, then make sure to check out my Twitch channel where I live stream every Monday and Thursday. If you miss a stream though, then make sure to check out the PC Jack VODs YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more with myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PCJack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while having to fund everything I do on the channel for you guys. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.